All right, guys, even here, and as you already probably know, John De La Rosa won the Toronto Pro. Second place finisher was Ian Valier. Third place was Josh Wade. And James Hollingshead was in the first call out, but he did not take fourth place. He was in top four. He actually took sixth place. And uh, fourth place was actually that big black dude from the previous video. And his name is actually Joe Seaman. <laughs> not Seaman, but Seaman, I guess. I don't know how to pronounce his name and he was actually fourth place fifth place was quinton area and both of these guys are from canada apparently so yeah that's her top six uh with james taking the sixth place they all look great i really like this show honestly i mean these are not top 10 mr olympia contenders as far as we know so far but maybe they will be in 2019 in the beginning, it seemed like Ian is going to win this competition, but later I figured out that's going to be John, because not only that he has much more complete back and overall back poses, but also in the front double bicep and front lat spread, I still go with John. He just looks proper. Ian looks kind of awkward. His vacuum didn't look good. It looked kind of weird for some reason. Josh Wade brought an amazing shape. He was shredded, peeled to the bone, but his structure probably hurt him. From the back, he looked better than Ian, but from the front, he wasn't as big, as muscular, so you can go both ways, but I think his structure is what hurts him the most. He's an older guy, so he's starting to have signs of palombism or that acromegaly, whatever it is. But yeah, great show, great show, great lineup. Everyone was in condition. Everyone looked great, but in my opinion, John absolutely deserved this victory. He was full, he was shredded, he was complete, symmetrical, and he has an amazing structure. When he is on, he's a very dangerous bodybuilder. He has those long muscle bellies, look at his arms, and look at his chest, it's very striated, but his belly button is popping out, which is not looking very pretty, but it is what it is. Anyways, very good bodybuilder, very complete. When he is shredded, when he is actually conditioned, which is not happening very often, but when it happens, as you can see, he's very hard to beat. He has an amazing structure. I'm really looking forward to seeing him at the Mr. Olympia. Hopefully, he will repeat this kind of shape, this kind of conditioning. And if he does that, yeah, his quads are not that good. He could add a little bit more size to the quads and he could grow a few inches taller. Then he would look much more impressive. He's standing next to these guys and they are not especially tall. They're not. Imagine him standing next to Cedric McMillan, for example, or some other bodybuilders. But, you know, he's okay like this. I think he has pretty good chances to crack the top 10, maybe even place higher than 10 place. But we'll see in a couple of months. However, this guy on the left, Joe Seaman, he looked freaking crazy. <laughs> I mean, look at those bellies. He is huge. His legs are humongous. His shoulders are very wide. He has wide clavicles, narrow waist pretty much narrow waist that gives an illusion that he's even wider upstairs his arms are also very big very full i was honestly surprised by this guy i didn't know about him before and now when i see him here he looked very impressive standing next to these top bodybuilders so i'm sure this guy is going to do great in the future we'll see i don't know how old is he if you guys know any more information about him tell me in the comment section below i want to check this dude out so please if you have any information about him tell me in the comment section below and now let's talk about Ian Valier. Ian promised that he's gonna improve his back and did he do that? I'd say so. I think he did. I think he improved not only his back but his glutes and hamstrings as well. His legs look bigger from the back but I think Josh Wade looked better from the back. And for a moment there when they switched to their places, when they put Josh in the middle, I thought maybe Josh is gonna take second because not only that his back was more developed and his glutes and hamstrings but he was more conditioned. He was more conditioned than Ian and probably more conditioned than John too. But you know, the structure is very important and I was thinking no way that he can beat John when it comes to structure, but he can beat Ian, but he didn't. Josh took third and Ian placed second. And the reason for that is not only the structure, but actually those side poses, first of all, Ian looks much thicker in the side poses, but John, John is nailing them both here. Um, yeah, maybe it's the angle and yeah, John is shorter, but he just looks super impressive. And from the front also, Ian looks just freaking crazy from the front, especially in this most muscular pose. Look at the sides of his shoulders, arms, 
and his legs as well. There is an argument, someone in the comment section commented that his legs actually looked smaller than they looked before at the Mr. Olympia, for example. And maybe that was the case, maybe they were smaller, a little bit smaller than before, but I would say that they were still the best on that stage. Not from the sides, on the sides John had far thicker hamstrings, but glutes on uh, Ian were actually very good, and quads, his quads are really really impressive, but what impresses me the most is his front upper body for sure, arms, shoulders and chest, and also the waist. His waist is very small and his abs are really good, symmetrical and developed, dry, very good stomach, I like his stomach a lot and I like the weed taper that he has, so very impressive bodybuilder for sure. I can see him do great in the future, I can see him being top 10 Mr. Olympia contender, I think he will do that, that's very reasonable. Will he be higher than that? Will he ever be top 6 or top 3 competitor? I don't know about that, maybe, maybe not. I think he's very young and he still has enough time to improve on his weaknesses, such as back, mainly back, everything else is pretty solid. And he just needs a couple of pounds of muscle extra to improve the quality of his physique. And that all will come with time. Anyways, uh, I didn't find many good quality photos of Josh Wade, but I just want to say that it's a shame that his conditioning wasn't rewarded. Third place at this competition is not bad, but his conditioning was the best at this lineup by far. He was peeled to the bone and you need to commend him for that, if not for anything else. He was really good and yeah, his structure hurts him a little, but if he can add a couple of pounds of muscle, maybe that structure of his wouldn't hurt him as much. But for now, he looked really awesome, really good, really conditioned, a lot of details. I like to see that. It really impresses me. But what about James Hollingshead? James didn't really crack the top 4 or top 3 as I may have expected, but he brought better package than before, than ever, pretty much his best shape ever I will say. His glutes were peeled, his back, his back looked much better, much improved, he showed a lot of details in his back, especially from this back double bicep suppose, but maybe even more so from the back lat spread. He just looks really good, he looks better, he improves, competition after competition. And yeah, I, as I said many times, I expect this guy to do great things in the future. He just needs to improve. He does need to improve. But the structure is there, the will power is there. He's very focused, very determined, and I'm sure he will succeed. So that's about it for this video, guys, about this Toronto Pro. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to like the video. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.